What's up, everybody? Welcome to the show. This right here is another Gray Zone Warfare video. I'm going to be bringing you everything you need to know about the game before you get your hands on it. We're probably going to be getting some information here in the next two weeks with the playtesting beginning pretty soon, along with the early access that's going to come before April 1st. So I wanted to bring you every single thing I know about the game so when you do play it, you'll be prepared. So what is Grey Zone Warfare? Grey Zone Warfare is a first person shooter that combines tactical player versus environment versus player or PVEVP elements, providing an immersive experience. Players are going to be able to select from one of three private military companies, navigating an expansive open world environment, either solo or with a squad. Survival involves adapting to surroundings, employing tactical strategies, and engaging in combat against both human operators and AI controlled enemies. This game is being developed by Madfinger Games. They've had a lot of success on the mobile platform, and they're bringing forth a lot of dedication to try to push out their first piece game. So let me give you a little bit of detail about how each session will go. Grey Zone Warfare is not going to impose a time limit on sessions. Players can stay in the session as long as they want, promoting a more approachable and flexible gaming experience. Starting out with over 150 missions, vendors, traders similar to Tarkov, which is going to allow for a more dynamic and evolving narrative within the game world. Your player, your gear, your story progress, everything's going to be tied to your account. So it's going to be a seamless transition, ensuring a smooth and continuous gaming experience every time you get back on. Everything you do, every task you have, every skill you've leveled up will all be tied to your player. Now, with that comes wipes. I do believe this game is going to have wipes, some form of a type of reset experience. The devs have personally said that they are considering wiping the game every six months. Grey Zone Warfare is developed using the latest Unreal Engine 5 technology, which is going to ensure unparalleled graphic fidelity and realism. I've seen a few people upset with this, but it is what it is. A 2070 RTX is going to be the minimal graphical processor chip required for playing the game. The game is going to strive to have the highest visual accuracy with ongoing exploration of optimization options for future improvements. Grey Zone Warfare is going to be initially released on PC, but in the future they plan to explore other platforms based on player feedback. Let's talk about global release. So due to certain themes, a global release may not be possible for all regions. However, efforts will be made to make the game available to the widest possible audience. The game will be initially available in English for early access. Additional language support, Spanish, French, etc. will be added in subsequent updates. Let's talk about the release timeline. What we do know is there's going to be a closed playtest within the next five weeks. Now, depending on how that playtest goes, depends on when they will start early access. But if everything goes smoothly, they will start early access shortly after and hit their goal of early access release quarter one of 2024. But they have stated that that is subject to change just in case they run into a lot of issues with the playtest. So how much will the game cost? I'm assuming the playtest will be free for those who are selected. We don't know how you're going to be selected, but the early access will have a premium cost. They're going to have no microtransactions because they want to emphasize a fair and inclusive gaming experience. Let's go into the overview of the game a little bit more. The tactical realism. Grey Zone Warfare is trying to place a strong emphasis on realism in its tactical first person shooter gameplay. With the private military company narrative, the game is going to unfold in Southeast Asia, where the three PMCs are tasked with exploring, uncovering secrets, securing valuable assets after a mysterious event on Lemang Island. Let's talk about the map. This is one of my favorite things. The game offers a huge 42 square kilometer open world setting located in the Democratic Republic of Lemang. Some of my audience is here from Escape from Tarkov. So to put that in perspective, the map on Grey Zone Warfare is going to be about 27 times the size of woods, which is pretty crazy. Let's talk a little bit about weapons and gear and customization. The game's going to allow players to create personalized firearms by exchanging, removing, and adding various parts, mounts, accessories, and really anything for the weapon so you can adapt to every situation. Let's talk about another one of my favorite things, which is the health system. I recently made a video on this talking about some things I caught in some of the trailers and images. So departing from the 
the traditional hit points, Grayzone Warfare is going to try to feature a unique health system simulating the human body realistically, which is very huge. Like that is awesome because like there's not many games that do that. There's games that you bleed out, you have to do a generic surgery, things like that. They don't really process how to anatomically examine a human realistically like Grayzone Warfare is going to try to do, requiring players to identify and address issues for survival. So I've heard different things with this, like skill level with medics and stuff like that. They're going to be able to operate and do different things in the field that someone who's not a medic. An example of this is going to be a medic, like some form of medical skill where someone who is a low level in this field might only be able to do simple generic medical procedures, bandaging, tourniquets, simple things like that. But as you increase your medical skill, you will be able to do more complex surgeries. So imagine you deploy and somebody has a lot of loss of blood and their thorax is messed, you know, injured, they're about to die. You might not be able to medically take care of that yourself, but one of your teammates might if they have that required skill level. That's not really unique for games in general. It is extremely unique and I think one of the first to do it with a first person shooter. Let's talk a little bit about the storyline. Players immerse themselves in a mature narrative through missions, encountering a diverse cast of characters with their own secrets and agendas. They have time and time again said they want to focus on the story and the missions. So I think focusing on that as a player is going to bring you the most entertainment. So let's talk about the numbers on the map. So there's going to be a total of 48 players possible on the map at any given time. That's three 16 man factions. Your squad size can vary from obviously solo up to four players. So the number of squads on the map are going to vary quite a bit. So what does that mean for PVP at the start of the game and early access? From the best of my knowledge and everybody I've talked to, it's going to just basically be an added layer of excitement in the game. There is no missions. There is nothing that you have to do or seek out for PVP. It is just an added element of fun, surprise, you know, high stakes type of gameplay that's going to be added into the game. There's no need there's no need to do it. You can avoid all PVP to my understanding. In the future they have talked about adding some sort of territory control, fighting for different points of interest in the faction, kind of like a territory war type thing like with games like New World and stuff like that. It's not going to be an early access out the gate. I don't look too much into that for now, but we do know you can seek the PVP a little bit if you want to, but there's really not going to be much reward in it except for the loot and maybe a little bit of leveling with the skills and things like that. But as far as any missions, anything to do with the game completing the game you don't have to worry about it at all i did not like this when i first heard about it but as i thought it through even more and more i think that's awesome because the pvp will not be forced and for those of you that play tarkov a prime example is someone having to use a bolt action rifle inside 25 meters or whatever the the quest is for uh jaeger because i think that's silly i think little stuff like that is kind of just you know kind of pointless bashing your head into a wall trying to complete it kind of makes no sense with the overall storyline of the game so the more i thought about it with Grey Zone Warfare, I think that's absolutely the best move. As long as the option is always there to seek it out, if you want to have a little bit of fun and try to have a little more PvP, I think that's great. Let's move on to what the island is. So it's Lamang Island. It's going to be placed under international quarantine following some type of mysterious event. They've quite literally labeled it the event, leading to the evacuation of the civilian population by the United Nations. So criminal groups have exploited the situation, leading to conflicts with the Lamang Armed Forces. The player, you, is basically a mercenary. You're recruited to reclaim the territory and fulfill the client's different tasks and explore the region's mysteries. Again, a very story-based approach to the game. So let's talk about how that will unfold in the missions. Players are going to encounter various adversaries, including criminals, military forces, serving local dictators and rival PMC operatives, which you talked about already. Now, when I hear things like serving local dictators, criminals, things like that, it kind of does sound like bosses, leaders, high value targets, which will be pretty cool. So all those things will come into play and get basically give you a narrative of a story to follow. Let's talk about landing and extraction. Flying around choosing landing zones is very crucial where you're going to go in at because you don't know who's there. You don't know you know what kind of threats are there so you're going to have to discover the map as you play there's always the option of on foot exploration if you don't want to choose the helicopter but both are going to unlock persistent world locations they've said a few times that the on foot exploration is going to reveal more of the unexplored locations with scarce loot different intriguing side stories and stuff like that which is going to add depth to the overall experience so this is a big one that a lot of people haven't talked about so risk management inside the game we, there is no time limit there's no constraints there's nothing like that except your survivability you can stay on the map as long as you need but one thing that's crucial is every moment that you spend on the map is going to heighten the risk of demise for potential loss of progress so i bring this back to escape from tarkov one of the things that makes escape from tarkov one of the funnest games i've played is the 
idea of looting, getting a lot of stuff, getting items that you need to get, having a lot of enemy gear on you, things that you want to use, a lot of XP that you're going to get, and then trying not to die. And those of you who have played that game, there's sometimes where you get into a big long firefight, there's a lot of stuff you have, but you gotta rush out and you're heavy and you gotta try to get to the extraction because the time's gonna run out. Take that time away. It's only your health, your food, your energy. You can sit in there as long as you need to and min-max everything and divvy up everything you want to do between your squad, increasing that risk, increasing that intensity of the game. Because if you die, so much progress is going to be lost. And I think that's going to make the game very fun. Another dynamic with this is going to be the idea of weather forcing you out of areas. That's not going to be an early access, but that will be coming later to the game. They talked about monsoons and flooding and different things like that, cutting off access to certain areas so you have to move out. But that's way more realistic than some fake timer that everybody has to abide by. So adapting to the environment, there's going to be a lot of unforeseen challenges that's going to be vital for your survival. And this is very important. Not every scenario is going to require confrontation. So avoiding conflict often is going to lead to more favorable outcomes so you can get out with that progression and have mission success. So what types of missions are we going to see? We're going to see some targets, assassinating targets, finding different types of loot, intelligence, different things like that. The extraction approach, I guess, is going to be kind of zone focused where you have discovered what's safe, you know, not not being in hot zones where you can call in for a little bird extraction, cautiously approach your landing zone and return basically back to your fob so you can cash in your rewards and gear up for the next deployment. They have hinted to some degree collaborating with other PMCs. These are probably going to be the ones in your faction. I don't know if you will have to seek it out to get certain things done. Like if certain areas near the center of the map are going to require way more than four people to complete certain things. I don't know how that will play. I don't know if there's going to be any type of text in the game where you can talk to your factions radio transmission, but they are hinting towards that. So, you know, at the very best, you can get 16 players together and possibly try to do a mission or something like that. I don't know if how that's going to unfold, but it has been talked about and hinted at. Trading. This is the last thing I want to talk about. Trading and the in-game economy is one of the biggest things about these games that make them so fun. Looting and having all this stuff, it's great if you're if you want to use it, but what if it's valuable and you don't want to use it? There needs to be some sort of trading system. Grays on Warfare is going to have that. A local trading system is going to allow players to engage in economic activities in the game world. It's not at the menu, it's not anything like that. I don't know if it's at your fob or if it's in the world somewhere. They've kind of hinted that it is in an area like a safe area that everybody can go to to trade. I don't know if this is going to be where you can list on like an auction house where everybody in the game can access it, kind of like a flea market on Tarkov, or if it's player to player only. So whoever's on the server, they've kind of hinted already that they want to enable players to trade items, resources, and equipment directly with one another. So finding somebody in that area, enhancing the collaborative and dynamic nature of the gaming experience. So will that be only your faction? I have no idea because that would be kind of crazy if it's you and then 15 other people and that's all you can trade with. You know, they might not want your items. So I don't I don't know how that's going to, to pan out. If you can do a little bit of both, maybe trade in person, maybe list something for, for the rest of the server or even the rest of the whole game. I don't know. But they've said time and time again, they want that interactive communication, you know, even bartering with one another, haggling prices. They want that to be a part of the game because they want people to start to work together over time. With all that said, guys. I appreciate you if you've made it through this whole video. This is everything that I thought would be worth talking about. There's probably going to be some more information released this week, but the very latest by the end of next week, the closed play test is right around the corner. Again, I will be giving every information about Grayzorn Warfare. As soon as I find out, you will have a video. I promise. Make sure you subscribe, ring the bell, because everything that you need to know will be right here. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them down below. But again, I appreciate y'all, and I'll catch you on the next video. Thank you.